If you're curious about the recent buzz surrounding the medication Ozempic, otherwise known as Wegovy, look no further. We're going to make everything clear in this video. In today's video, we'll examine this class of medications. I'm going to help you navigate through the maze of misinformation that has been rampant on social media and present you with the key factors that you need to know about this class of medications known as GLP-1 agonists. As of late, medications like Ozempic, otherwise known as Wegovy, otherwise known as semaglutide, have been making the headlines for their weight loss benefits and the claims are actually really impressive. But as with so many things these days, there is a lot of hype and misinformation that we need to clarify. And there are also a few very important caveats that you need to know. Here in Canada, more than 3.5 million prescriptions worth nearly $1.2 billion were dispensed for Ozempic in 2022. Now in 2023, Ozempic fever, as I like to call it, has spread among celebrities like Elon Musk, who claims to have lost 30 pounds from a combination of using these popular medications combined with fasting. Other celebrities and social media influencers have also contributed to the hype, creating hundreds of videos about their weight loss experience while on this medication. This has created a massive surge in demand for a medication that was originally approved in 2017 by the FDA to help treat patients with diabetes and also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease in these patients. For you to have an idea, the government of British Columbia, where I'm from, actually had to step in and prohibit sales to out-of-province residents in order to protect our own supply from American citizens who were trying to get these medications across the border, apparently due to a shortage of the medication in the US. Though originally approved in 2017 for patients with diabetes, the FDA approved semaglutide in June of 2021 as an adjunct to a reduced calorie diet and increased physical activity for chronic weight management in a subset of adult and pediatric patients, which you can see here. Now, as a pharmacist, you should know that we pharmacists are usually among the most skeptical when it comes to medications and off-label uses or claims that a particular medication or supplement is being hyped up as some type of miraculous intervention. And this is no exception. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been some incredible medical advances over the years, and GLP-1 agonists, which is the class of medications that Ozempic, Victoza, Bietta, and Trulicity belong to, are definitely an incredible scientific discovery. This class of medications have been found to reduce both the total fat mass and visceral fat mass, and some users have even reported that they no longer crave alcohol while on this class of medications. But there are some things that you need to know about this class of medications that not very many people are talking about. First and foremost, how do these medications work anyway? As I stated earlier, Ozempic belongs to a family of medications called GLP-1 receptor agonists. GLP-1 is an endogenous hormone, meaning that our body makes this naturally when we eat food. So when GLP-1 is released, it goes to the pancreas to help the body produce insulin, which helps to regulate blood sugar levels. But this messenger molecule also works on the brain to increase feelings of fullness. And because the body still needs energy, if the person no longer feels like eating, the body has no choice but to use the energy from stored fat cells. So by mimicking the endogenous activity of these incretin or gut hormones, these medications are able to increase insulin secretion by the pancreas, thereby lowering blood glucose. They're also able to suppress inappropriate glucagon secretion by the liver, which prevents the liver from dumping more sugar into the bloodstream. They slow gastric motility and increase the feeling of fullness by reducing the peristaltic movements of the intestinal tract, which is also where some of the side effects come from. They also have a physiological effect on appetite and caloric intake, by activating areas of the brain where the GLP-1 receptor is present. According to Dr. Sean Wharton, obesity medicine specialist and adjunct professor at McMaster University, the belief, though not all the evidence is in, is that semaglutide works on the brain's mesolimbic system, the hedonic part of the brain where you want more than what you need to sustain yourself. The hedonic part of the brain is controlled by opioids, 
cannabinoids, and dopamine. Cravings live there, said Wharton. Cravings for food, alcohol, and sex. Essentially, when on these medications, people report less hunger, and with less energy consumption throughout the diet, the body still needs energy to survive. So it uses the energy from stored fat cells, which in turn leads to weight loss. So what does the science say on all of this? Well, in a trial that involved nearly 2,000 adults, participants taking Ozempic's active ingredient, semaglutide, experienced significant weight loss. After 68 weeks of treatment, they lost an average of 15% of their body weight, compared to only 2.4% in the placebo group. The weight loss in the semaglutide group was a significant 15.3 kilograms, while the placebo group only saw 2.6 kilograms of weight loss. So you can see why these medications are becoming quite popular among those who see this as a fast track to losing weight. But what about the side effects? As with any medication, there are side effects to be aware of. The most common side effects include upset stomach, heartburn, burping, gas, and bloating. Also, nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, and loss of appetite. Some people have reported diarrhea and constipation, runny nose, sore throat, and stomach flu symptoms. Some people also experience headache, dizziness, or tiredness. Many of these side effects can be managed by slowly increasing the dose of medication over time. However, even when this occurs, some patients may still experience nausea or diarrhea when they first start taking the medication. These side effects can be managed by consuming smaller, more frequent meals, staying hydrated, and avoiding fatty foods. Although the risk is minimal, there is a possibility of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, especially in patients who are on insulin or other medications that stimulate insulin. In such cases, dose adjustments may be necessary for these patients. Though this medication has now been given to millions of people worldwide and was first developed back in 2012, it's important to highlight that the long-term effects of Ozempic are still unknown. As with any type of therapy or intervention, it's important to weigh the risks versus benefits. And again, it's generally recommended to use this medication alongside a reduced calorie diet and a regular exercise routine. And while rare, it is crucial to be aware of the potential side effects of Ozempic. In animal studies, this medication has been linked to pancreas or gallbladder inflammation, kidney problems, and certain thyroid tumors. It's uncertain whether the same effect occurs in humans. Nonetheless, Health Canada advises against using this medication if there is a personal or family history of thyroid cancer. So what happens when you decide to stop taking Ozempic? If you decide to discontinue Ozempic, it's likely that you will regain the weight that you have lost. According to Dr. Sean Wharton, this medication helps regulate calorie intake and reduce hunger cravings, but it doesn't alter the underlying genetic factors contributing to obesity. A recent study has shown that a year after stopping once weekly semaglutide injections, people generally regained about two thirds of their previous weight loss. However, it's important to note that sustaining a weight loss of even 5% of your initial body weight can greatly improve blood sugar control and reduce cardiovascular risk factors. Therefore, using Ozempic as a tool to achieve this when accompanied with lifestyle changes could prove to be beneficial. Another factor that needs to be considered and is rarely being discussed is the loss of muscle mass. As we age, we naturally lose muscle mass, and that's why it's extremely important to incorporate some type of resistance training into your exercise routine. One concern with Ozempic and similar medications has been the potential loss of muscle mass. A study conducted by Japanese researchers showed that within just three months, participants experienced a muscle mass loss of up to half a kilogram. This emphasizes the importance of incorporating resistance training into any weight loss plan involving medications like Ozempic to ensure that the weight loss is primarily fat and not muscle mass. And this would also apply to any other type of dietary intervention. So are there additional benefits to these medications? As I mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of Ozempic is its statistically significant proven cardiovascular benefit. GLP-1 receptor antagonists, including dulaglutide, liraglutide, and subcutaneous semaglutide have proven cardiorenal benefits in high-risk populations and are associated with weight loss. Patients who lose weight are more likely to avoid the burden of early morbidity and mortality associated with the diagnosis of diabetes and obesity. And again, a weight loss of five to 
has shown to improve glycemic control and lessen cardiovascular risk factors such as high blood pressure and high cholesterol. GLP-1 receptor antagonists have shown the greatest benefit in terms of weight reduction compared to other antihyperglycemic agents, including a popular class of diabetes medications known as SGLT2 inhibitors. As far as how they perform in regards to weight loss, the effect on weight is strongest from liraglutide and semaglutide. Again, these medications are not a magic bullet. The scientific evidence we have supports the use of various strategies in addition to A1C control for cardiovascular prevention, including blood pressure and lipid targets, cardiovascular prevention medications, physical activity, and other healthy behaviors, as well as smoking cessation. There are also other medications that work not only on GLP-1, but on additional receptors that help regulate and suppress appetite and lead to weight loss. One example is Lily's medication, Monjaro, which mimics the effects of GLP-1, but also hits receptors for another hormone, GIP. So semaglutide fever continues, and though these medications may indeed promote weight loss and have proven cardiovascular benefits, it's important to remember that no medication is a panacea. It's important to be aware of potential side effects and the importance of incorporating lifestyle changes that will last longer than any medical intervention into your strategy for weight loss or diabetes. Thank you for watching and please take care and stay healthy.